Well, good morning. It is very early, uh, 25 past six right now. Um, not that early really. <laughs> Sunrise, we're lucky at the moment, it's coming up around uh, 10 to seven. So it's pretty late at the moment as we come towards the end of our daylight savings. I'm down to the Soldier's Point again, trying to capture the jetty, um, which is just over there. So I'll walk over there shortly. Uh, the last time I was here, the place was just absolutely smothered in fog and I got a beautiful image of a couple of boats and the sun popping through the clouds, but today I'm back to try and get the jetty, so let's see if we manage that. Let's go. Um, I'll walk you through my shot, let you know how I'm going about setting up and what it is that I'm doing. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get a good shot this morning. Alrighty, one of the benefits is I have been here before. I can see there's another photographer here already because um, there's only really a couple of options down here when it comes to jetty. So there's the jetty over here. Uh, there's not too many. There's one called uh, Little Beach. There's a little wooden jetty over there, which is better for sunset. Uh, and this is probably the only one that's really good for sunrise. And now if we look out onto the horizon, the clouds are pretty low and pretty thick. And I know, I looked at the radar, there's rain uh, offshore. So that's probably gonna affect our, our images this morning. You know, we probably won't get the most spectacular sunrise, but let's set up and see what we can get anyway. Well, really, you know, they say that composition is everything and I sort of agree with that. So I'm trying to do something completely different and I'm gonna shoot low down and try and get this bush here in the foreground. So I've got my tripod right here. I'm not too worried about that photography. He's moved up the jetty a bit, but it doesn't really matter too much because I'm going to be shooting low and wide. Um, all right, let's have a look and see what we've got. All righty, so I've now set up my composition and I can tell you straight away that uh, I'm going to need some filters. So I'm just going to get some filters ready. So we'll get the filter holder on there like that. better spot there we go and then I've got my leaf filters here so we'll just have a bit of a look through and see what's going to work best alrighty so straight away now I'm going to need something in the sky um, when you're using live view on these cameras you can't really see the foreground when the sky's really bright so what I do is actually put my hand across the, the, the really bright part and it automatically adjusts the live view exposure for the bottom half of the image so the foreground becomes much lighter and it allows you to be able to then see what you're focused on and see what everything looks like so it's just a little trick for you if you've got a DSLR and you're using live view that's how you sort of get your image to show the foreground look brighter so you can see how you're composing your image and really, composition is everything. All right, well now, I've sort of got my composition sorted, which I'll talk you through in a second. The next step is to work out, uh, you know, what sort of filter I'm gonna need, because I'm definitely gonna need a graduated filter now. Having said that, if you don't have graduated filters, you get away with this, because there's definitely, uh, depending on the camera you've got, but with this camera, I would definitely be able to just take the image and then sort it out in post-processing later because the raw files allow me to do that with the pulling the shadows out so I wouldn't have any trouble doing that but I'm going to put one on anyway because I'm a great believer in, in a couple of things um, I'm not a purist as such where I've got to get it right in camera so it's a 0.9 that's three stops we'll try that um, I'm not a purist as such where I've got to get it 100% right in camera I'm happy to use um, post-processing to sort things out if I need to and that's that's okay you know there's nothing wrong with that and that's a, a you know for me that's a big part of my photography is being able to later uh, either clean things up or you know manipulate things to get the best out of the image and when I say manipulate I'm talking about just changing things like exposure white balance colors vibrance clarity etc because I think that's a big part of it, a really nice looking image. Um, 
yeah, so don't be afraid to do that. Uh, but if I can get it better, what, what I've learned with these cameras is the better you can get the exposure in camera, the better you'll get, be able to pull the detail out, the better the colours will be in particular. Uh, when you're doing a, a shoot like a sunrise or a sunset, the foreground is the thing that usually always suffers. And I find that if you can get the foreground to expose well in your, uh, in your shot, you'll, you'll get better detail out of it when you go back to processing your image. So that's just my little tip. Uh, I find that works really well. Now the point, the point 0.9 grade is working really nice. I'm just thinking about trying a polarizing filter because there's a lot of shine coming off the, off the water. So um, I might pop that on and just see what that looks like. Um, I don't think there's going to be any amazing sunrise, but I don't know. We, we're, we're still 10 minutes away from actual sunrise. So, um, you know, we could see something amazing. Who knows? Hopefully we will. Okay, so I'm just checking to see which way the polarizing filter goes. Um, one of the things about this Lee filter kit is that it doesn't have a rotating circular polarizer on the front. So I have to use one that's square and I have to slide it in the right way for it to be polarizing. Now you can put two filters into this. Um, and I can see as I look through the filter that as I do that, that's reducing the glare. So I'm gonna put that on. Um, and just see how that goes. Um, I can rotate it once it's in the holder, which is why the holder rotates. But um, I've got to keep the holder in an upright position because I also need for my graduated filter to be in the right position. That can go on the second slot. So it's a little bit of a pain to be honest with you. Um, all right, that's looking good. And so it is a little bit of tricky um, the other thing with filters, by the way, that a lot of people don't realise, well, with leaf filters anyway, is the words have to face out for the filter to be correct. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. All right, I'll get you down here and we'll take you through the composition so you can just see what I'm doing. All right, I'll talk you through my composition. Just give you a bit of an idea of what it is that I'm doing. Because uh, it's always, you know, every photographer shoots a bit differently when it comes to composition. And so what I want to do is just sort of show you what I'm doing. Um, first of all, you'll notice uh, my tripod. Let me just get these glasses on my head. Got to wear these short lookers these days. All right. So you notice I've got my tripod set up nice and low. Now, by the way, this is one of the reasons I do like a tripod without a center column. Because if you have a center column, Sometimes it doesn't let you get down low enough. Now this tripod will go lower than that. Um, but as you can see, if I just come forward a bit next to it, this is sort of the composition that I'm going for. So you can see down here is a little bush. So that's just a bit of, brings a bit of colour into it. We've got the rocks. Um, the dirt where I'm set up is all a bit ugly. There's a bit of rubbish here or whatever. So it's not, it's a bit of a populated area this. So it's, a, it's not the greatest. And then of course over there we've got the jetty coming in from the left hand side and pointing to where the sun will rise. Now the sun will rise somewhere around there, uh, maybe, <laughs> according to my app. Um, but yeah, so that's my composition. As for settings, I've got ISO 64, which is pretty much what I normally do. Um, yeah, ISO 64, which is what I pretty much normally do. I'm at F10. And you can see that right now that's giving me 1.6 seconds. So, you know, that's sort of what's going on there. Um, shooting raw as usual. My white balance is in cloudy, but ignore that. I'm shooting raw, so it doesn't matter what my white balance is doing. Um, but yeah, that'll sort of give you an idea of what I'll do. I might change that aperture a little bit here and there just to get a few different shots. This lens really good between f8 and f11. So, you know, f11 is giving me 1.6 seconds. Take a shot. Um, you'll see I've got the two filters on there, so I've got the circular polarizing filter and I've got the graduated filter in there as well, the three stops. And you know, you can sort of see the sky, the foreground's quite dark and then the sky is very bright. And so that's why I use that filter, just to try and help me out with that. 
even with your graduated filters in, you can still obviously get overexposure. So it still pays to look at your histogram or your flashing highlights, which I like to do. I always have the flashing highlights on, so I've just taken a shot. I'm gonna go and have a look and I can see that right at the top of the clouds, it's flashing. Okay, so that tells me that I've got some highlights there that are clipped. Uh, and what that means is that it's overexposed. Now I'm actually at minus 0.7 already. So I'm gonna bring my exposure compensation down to minus one and see what difference that makes. So I'll take another shot now. Now the only dilemma with that um, is there's a, I mean, there's a side effect to everything that you change. The biggest dilemma with that is it shortens my shutter speed because that's how the camera does exposure compensation. So it doesn't change anything in the, set, in the sensor itself. When you use exposure compensation, what it actually does is it changes something. Now because I'm in aperture priority, it doesn't change my aperture. What it changes is my shutter speed. And so it reduces my shutter speed. So if I was going for a longer exposure, um, that is the side effect. So sometimes you might put up with a bit of clipping if it's minute and it's not uh, gonna affect your image if you're after a desired shutter speed. So just something to think about. Um, but I've just done that one at minus one and I can tell just by looking at the histogram, it's fine. All that's left to do now is wait. Sit and wait and see if the colour comes out, which I'm not feeling very confident about, to be honest with you. With all that cloud on the horizon, I think it's gonna stifle our attempts to get an amazing image. Anyway, it's beautiful to be out, isn't it? That's the key. I asked a question the other day on my Facebook page, and uh, you know, what was the biggest or the number one challenge? And I'll ask you the same question. What's your number one challenge when it comes to photography? Leave it down in the comments. Uh, and it was interesting to see, well, pause the video and do that first because I don't want to influence your answer. Um, but it was interesting to see that a majority of people said the number one issue they had was getting the time to get out and shoot. So boy, oh boy, people must be getting super busy, but you know, I think you just got to get up early. So this, you know, it's 10 to seven now. Um, I got up a quarter to six, so an hour ago. This is only five minutes from my house. So I'm fortunate, I guess, from that perspective. I used to live a lot further away from uh, sort of good locations. But yeah, you've got to get up early and just get out. So set your alarm, get your camera and everything ready the night before, lay your clothes out, make it as easy as possible. I do. Um, so all I have to do is get up, go to the toilet, get dressed, and I'm out the door. And everything is just ready, it's charged, and I know I can just go out and enjoy some photography. All right, well, the sun is finally coming up. I don't know if you, how well you're gonna be able to see that. It is, it's going off, I don't know. It doesn't seem to pick up the color up there too much. Uh, let me see if I can make that work. No, there you go, there you go. Just up there, there we go. Just poking out above those clouds, so nothing too crazy, that's for sure. <laughs> But something's happening. All right, so let's see if we can capture this. Put you there. Let's see how we go getting this. Um, I'm just now gonna be trying a few different uh, settings, etc. I might zoom in. I'm zoomed right out. I'm gonna zoom in a bit because it is nowhere near tight enough to capture that. That means I'm just gonna have to change my composition just ever so slightly. And I'm gonna use, I like using the live view more than anything. And when it comes to focusing, uh, I'm pretty lazy. I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm loving this touch screen. So what I do is I turn it on to autofocus, I touch the screen, and then I turn it off. And that way I know that if I do touch the screen to zoom in or something, I'm not gonna change the focal point because that is one of the dangers with it. Um, I typically have got focus on the button, which a lot of people don't do. They like to have back button focus, which is cool. Um, but I typically, have focus on the button because I use a remote. And the only way to get the focus to activate with the remote is to have it on that button. It doesn't recognize it on back button. So, all right, the colors are definitely going off a bit now, which is good. Um, I'm gonna widen the shot out just a bit because I wanna get the shot. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. That's finally delivering something, um, which is lovely. Let me just double check. I haven't got anything blown out. No, nothing blinking. Histogram looks really good, so. Now, if you've got a good histogram, you're laughing. Yep, there's some colour now. All right. So just to remind you, I haven't changed my settings since I spoke to you last time at f11, ISO 64. 
I've got the 0.9 graduated filter in there. I've got the circular polarizing filter. Now I will take some without that in there and I'll tell you why. Sometimes um, I find that it does weird stuff when the sun is facing you. Uh, and you're not supposed to use them when the sun is facing you. So they're good pre-sunrise, but I find that if you put it in there, once the light is really hitting your camera, it can have a bit of an effect. So take your polarizing filter out after sunrise or once the sun's up, just to make sure you don't, you know, get some weird stuff going on. All right, we're getting a fair bit of color in the sky now. So I'm gonna put this down. This is very expensive. So I'm just gonna pop this over into its case so I don't damage it. One of the bad things about these big filters is how much they cost. <laughs> so let's pop that over there. Um, yeah, I don't know what this guy's gonna do. It's looking pretty good. Let's see if it colors up anymore. I think I'll just keep that composition. I might just zoom in a bit tighter if I can. That's it, I'm now at 24 mil. I can't go any, any tighter. Uh, but, but what that does, unfortunately, is it's made my sky area too small a part of the image, so, and the jetty not so big. So I'm just recomposing again means I'm probably not going to have the bush in there. No, no bush, but there is some rocks. I'm happy with that. Let's redo the focus just to make sure it's focused. So I'm actually focusing about two thirds of the way up the jetty. Um, and it make, it's, something like that's really good because of the contrast that you get. Um, and remember, focus works on contrast. So let's just reset that filter in the right spot. There we go. Yeah, every time you move the camera, you need to adjust the filter. I forgot to do that on that shot and I could see straight away. Beautiful, oh wow. Nice bit of colour. Wow. All right, cool. Happy days. Happy days. Good to have some good colour. There we go. There's my composition at the moment. As you can see, I've zoomed right in. Got the rocks there. The jetty pointing out towards the sunrise, which is nice. And uh, filters are still doing the job. So I'll take a shot and just show you once again. So as you can see, this is the main screen I like to look at when I'm previewing it. See, I've got minus one for my exposure compensation. I can see the histogram is all the way to the left. So there's a bit of a gap on the left there. Let me just get back in there. A bit of a gap on the left and a huge gap on the right. And that's what I like to see because that shows me that I'm not overexposing my image. I'll show you the other screen, which is the flashing highlight. Oh, by the way, I like doing it with color as well because the reds quite often, you know, I can see a little bit of red is on the right. You can actually lose a lot of your colors if that's if your red is overexposed. So don't just take that one that's the average of everything because that's what that is. You've got your RGB as well. So keep an eye on that. That's another tip for you. Um, let's just go to the next screen here. So this is my flashing highlight. See how everything looks pretty good. If I now, um, I'm gonna make a change with the exposure comp. Uh, I'll go plus one, just so you can see what happens with the flashing one. So. See all that flashing there? That's telling me that's all overexposed. And if we go back through and we have a look at the histogram, it's now on the right. And you can also see everything is bunched up to the right, especially the red. See the red is really, the red is the first one to go, typically in uh, landscape photography. So just be very careful as you're shooting. All right, I'll put that back now. To minus one. And let's keep capturing this color. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna call it. I reckon that's the best of the color gone. Uh, the sun's now been up for about 10 minutes and I've got some cracking shots, I think. A, a really good morning, ended up being really good. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something. Uh, once again, down in the comments, let me know what your number one photography challenge is. I'd love to know and, and uh, you know, see how many people are suffering interesting challenges. Um, yeah, so your number one challenge down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, why don't you get out and take some photos? See ya.